Good morning. Wade through the waters. Wade through the waters. <laughs> I don't know that or else I would have sung it. <laughs> Good morning, brethren. Good morning, brethren. On the behalf of our beloved brother um, from Joyful Noise, I, I, I think I can say this. Uh, the prayers of the saints have um, have been helpful. Thank you, brethren, for praying for our brother. Please continue to pray for him and pray for each other. Please. Please. We have the Lord, and we are all we have. Okay? That is more than sufficient. Well, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. That's not sinlessly perfect. But that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We have the perfect word of God right here, the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? And... We know God's perfect will for us today in this dispensation. And we are also commanded to study, to show ourselves approved unto God, that we be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But, oh yeah, that's right, dividing doesn't mean dividing in the Greek. <laughs> Yea, hath God said, also, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for, learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Today, brethren, today, brethren, we are going to be looking at Psalm 69. And this is something that is very neat for a lot of you. For a lot of us. Right here, right now, as it sits, um, the issues with my wife's health are um, still there. Um, please pray for my wife, your sister. It's slowly getting worse. But for our instruction in righteousness, for our comfort through the scriptures today. Excuse me. I'd like us to read um, through Psalm 69, and we're going to make some stops along the way. I am going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me in reading Psalm 69, okay? I'm just going to share with you what the Lord has shared with me. Um, we're going to... Please... Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Be a Berean, man. Woman, be a Berean. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow me along. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Okay? Be a Berean. We have the perfect word of God. Okay? So, like I said, I'm just going to share with you what the Lord shared with me in looking in Psalm 69. Okay? Alright? So let's, let's get right to it, shall we? Hmm. Psalm 69. Save me, O God. For the waters are come into my soul. This thing about waters. Hmm. Now, according to context, uh, when it comes to thing, when it comes to waters, uh, we, according to context, uh, it will the scriptures will tell you what waters are. Are, are they actually rivers, uh, seas? But also, waters can be a reference unto what? 
Revelation chapter 17. Psalm 69, verse 1. Save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. We're going to see contrast here. Revelation 17, verses 1 and 2. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore, Roman, Roman Catholicism, Mystery of Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, okay? Roman Catholicism. That sitteth upon many waters. Okay? Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the with made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So this woman, Roman Catholicism, sits upon many waters. Okay? But in this context here, waters. Waters. Context here in Psalm 69. Waters are come into my soul. David, who is the author, uh, attributed as the uh, hand that penned uh, Psalm 69, the author is God. Yes, the author is God, but uh, God used David's hand to pen this. Save me, O God, for the waters come into my soul. Come into my soul. And the enemy can kill our body, our flesh, but they can't kill our soul. They can't do anything to our soul. Was David drowning? In, in a sense, yes. How is he drowning? Because the waters were coming to his soul. And when you look in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples. And multitudes and nations and tongues are peoples. Man. Hmm. So when you look at Psalm 69, verse 1, Save me, O God, for the waters are come into my soul. In that context alone, is he talking about actual waters? No. No. He's using waters as an example of what? Okay? People. People. Okay? And contrast this, okay? Save me, O oh God, for the waters are coming to my soul. Okay? The waters are coming to my soul. We see in Revelation chapter 17 uh, that the waters here that the great horse sitteth upon over are what? Peoples. And multitudes and nations and tongues. Hmm. But look at uh, Ezekiel chapter seven, uh, 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. Hmm. This is good. I like this. I like this. Ezekiel chapter 47. Okay. Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east. And the waters came down from under the right side of the house. Of the house. Coming out from the house. The house of God. Okay? At the south side of the altar. We're reading on to verse 12, by the way. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward. And led me about the way without unto the utter gate. Unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. Now, we're going to see in this context that the waters here are exactly that. But let's keep going. The waters were to the ankles. You can dredge through ankle deep water pretty easily. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Okay, you can still dredge through um, uh, knee, uh, uh, deep waters, but now you got to give a little effort. You got to lift your legs up a little higher and you slush through and, you know, and get a good workout, right? Yes. Uh, and again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the, knee, to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand. 
and brought me through. The waters were to the loins, right from about waist level. Now, you can still get through way, uh, uh, loin deep uh, waters, but now you got to put in a lot of effort, okay? If you're going to stand upright, and especially if you're going against the current, okay? But you're, now you're expending a lot of energy, a lot of effort, but you can still do it. You can still do it. Verse 5, afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Hmm. And these waters came out of the, of the house, the house of God, okay? Hmm. And they started out, you know, at the ankles, then went to the knees, then went to the loins, Okay, and then it was so deep that, I mean, you can swim in it, but it was, you still couldn't pass it, even though you could swim in it. Hmm. Let's continue. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Hmm. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. And then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. Okay? And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from en even unto en -Galim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof, and the marshes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given the salt. Remember Lot's wife, who became a pillar of salt? She looked back and became a pillar of salt. Remember, remember Lot's wife? You know, you put your hand to the plow and you go forward, and but yet you look back and yearn. And it's like, oh, I should have never left that. Or, oh, I wish I had some of that. What I left behind, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. Spiritual, okay? Verse 12. And the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine, natural remedy, away from this poison pharmacaea, witch doctors, sorcery stuff that you get from the Jesuit trained doctors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now there is a whole lot that we can go off on on this. But 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This is, this is the direction that we're going to go on in this. Okay, Like I said, we can go in so many directions about that. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 8 on to verse 11. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, hmm. that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Psalm 69, verse 1. Save me, O God, for the waters have come into my soul. Hmm. For the waters have come into my soul. And... The great horse sits upon the waters, which are peoples, nations, languages, tongues, stuff like that. Multitudes, excuse me. Okay? But we saw that waters issued out of the temple and eventually became so deep that man couldn't pass through it. Hmm. Hmm. Wade through the waters. And Moses part of the Red Sea. Hmm. Because the Lord gave him, gave it to, you know, to part the Red Sea. Hmm. See, the devil will do what he can 
through his church, Roman Catholicism, and through those who serve him, will do everything he can to trip you up, to flood you with things, to call to remembrance your sin, to try to bog you down, and to try to overwhelm you. Okay? The Lord will allow things to happen that you can't make it on your own power, but you need him to wade through those waters. Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, out of the mouth of the dragon issue waters, right? Says that in the book of Revelation. And the whore sitteth upon many waters, and the waters are come into his soul. And today, for our instruction and in righteousness, uh, we get, you can easily get bogged down by all these Christians and all these devil coadjutors and all these, these, uh, people who worship uh, the, their traditions of men, you can get really bogged down and trying to go through that water. Hmm? Especially the waters that issue out from the, the house of God that the Lord allows. You know, there's a saying amongst Christians that God won't give you more than you can handle. That's a lie. God will give you purposely more than you can ever handle. Why? So you won't be able to go through the waters on your own strength, even though you labor to do so. But eventually you're going to have to go to him. You can't do it on your own. That you don't trust in yourself. Say. Psalm 69 verse 2. I sink in deep mire where there's no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. Hmm. And Ezekiel chapter 34, check this out. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34, check this out. We want verses 16 on to verse 19, not 24, Brad. So, uh, Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 16 on to verse 19. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. Floods. Uh, today, you know, Mystery Babylon, the floods issue out of the mouth of the dragon, okay? But yet, there are waters that the Lord puts there that you can't get through unless he is the one who's guiding you through it. Okay? I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. Now, we looked at, in uh, verse 1, uh, between Revelation and Ezekiel, the contrast. The one is there from the devil to stop you, to hold you down. The other there is to prevent you from depending on yourself. Okay? That you go to the Lord. Okay? I will see uh, Ezekiel 34, verses 16 on to verse 19. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away. I will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle and between rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down your down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters. Hmm. Drink the wine of, uh, eat the bread of, what is it? Drink the wine of something and the bread of violence or something? <laughs> Drink the, drink the wine that comes from Mystery Babylon and the bread that she offers. Yeah, yeah. And to have drunk of the deep waters, 
but ye must follow the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Look at Christianity. Christianity that is run, owned, and operated has the 501c3 stamp of approval on it. Operated and run by Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism. Hmm. And these poor Christians being fed with what? And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet from the Bibles, from the traditions of men. <laughs> from the little clicks here and there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and Psalm 63, Psalm 63, Psalm 63, verses 1 on verse 2. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. I sink a deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. It's like, well, wait a minute, Brad. Uh, there's an abundance of waters. Yes, but are these the waters that are being fed to people nowadays, brethren? Are those waters pure? Are they living water? Or are they fouled with the feet of the whore. Hmm? Hmm? Does the living water that Christianity gives, does that lead on to life? Or does it lead on to bondage? Hmm? Does it lead on to pride? Hmm. On this, John 4. Of course, we, you knew we had to go to here, didn't you? Didn't you? John 4. See these difference in the waters, okay? A dry and thirsty uh, land where there's no water. Hmm. Hmm. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 9 on verse 14. The woman at the well. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Living water. Hmm. Way through the waters. Hmm. The living water of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord himself. Christianity is not giving living water, but they are giving water that is fouled with the feet of a whore. And hence Christianity, dear brethren, Church of the Living God, Christianity and those Christians in these last days, brethren, before the redemption of the purchased possession, whenever that will happen, the Christians are going to be our worst enemies. They already are. They already are. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst, now, we thirst after righteousness, yes. But see, we are saved, born again, converted. We have the Lord living within us. He is that wellspring of water springing up in us. And we are nourished and satisfied by the word. But see, Christianity and the enemies that use yea hath God said with their Bibles that are lacking, that are fouled by the feet of the whore. Those waters are muddied. They're not giving life. So hence you thirst again. See, they thirst. And the water they get doesn't satisfy. It doesn't quench it. 
We thirst. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Come to me, all ye who labor are in heavy loading, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon thee, and learn of me, and I will give you rest. See? See? What Christianity has given you makes you thirst. And that's a thirst that cannot be quenched by what they give you. No matter how they razzle and dazzle it. See, we who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. We do thirst, yes. But see, we are satisfied. We are nourished by the sincere milk of the word. Through that living water. Verse 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. We thirst after his righteousness, yes. But see, we have the Lord within us. Hence, we're never going to go thirsty spiritually. Never. We may make dumb decisions and decide to go after things that we shouldn't. You know, we might, uh, we might fall. We don't fall away. Safe people don't fall away. We might fall into error. Or, well, it's, we choose. We make dumb choices, okay? But we can make mistakes, yes. But see, if we have the Lord within us, okay? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Shall never thirst. Unless you want to be an idiot, void of logic and reason, and decide to believe what you want to believe instead of what he wants you to believe. Yeah. But the water that, sh that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life everlasting that seal until the day of redemption. Okay? All right? I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. But yet there are abundance of waters. Aren't there? Look here online, yes. But see, that water is fouled with the feet of Rome. Fouled with their traditions of men. But see, the water that comes of our Lord Jesus Christ himself through the word nourisheth, satisfies. Verse 3 in Psalm 69. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. Verse 4 ties it up. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of mine head. So waters sink into my soul, or come into my soul, sinking in deep mire, uh, deep mire where there's no standing. I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. Okay? They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Hmm. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Check this out. John chapter 14 verses 30 on to 31. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of the power of the air. Okay? But that the world may know that I love the Father. And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. He said, let's go. I'm leading the way. Arise, let us go hence. This is, this is not a reference unto the redemption of the purchased possession, by the way. Okay? But hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. And of course on that, second, uh, what is that? Second Corinthians chapter 4, right? Right? Second Corinthians chapter 4. Yeah, yes. <clears throat> uh, verses 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world 
that old serpent, the devil, Satan, Lucifer, you know, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies, wrongfully are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 18. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh... I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Ooh. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Well, we'll get to that last part here in a minute. Okay? Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Mm. They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you that ye might affect them. And of course, uh, cross-reference uh, Galatians 6, 13, For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. Yes, this unexhaustible a uh, topic of Christ dependence versus self-sufficiency. It's inexhaustible. And we're hitting this hard because you're going to see this self-sufficiency come out in these uh, last months of this year. Watch. Watch. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. Why callest thou me good? There is only one good. That is God. God is the only good. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. Yeah, when it's just you and the four walls and the ceiling and the floor. What you are alone. What are you alone? Huh? What are you like when only the Lord sees Yeah, what do you like when only... Now go to uh, John chapter 7. Check this out. John chapter 7. Yes. I, you, you getting what we're saying, what we're looking at here for, right? You got this, right? Don't worry, we're going to get on to... Uh, spawn a little bit on it. They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. They that, they that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. John chapter 7, verses 6 and 7. Then Jesus saith unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. And of course, and of course, Luke 22, this one, verse 53. Luke 22, 1 verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour in the power of darkness. You see, brethren, as you've already figured out, most of you, the Lord who lives in you, the world, the lost, the Christians hate. And they can't kill the Lord, but they can kill you physically. They can try to smear you, slander you, do whatever they can to put you down because of that whore who sits on the waters. And even in those waters, the Lord will guide you through. But see, 
It's not a water, especially that you can dredge through all the time. It will get so deep that you have to depend on the Lord to get you through it. But see, the Lord that lives in you, brethren, the world and the lost hates. So, they that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. You look on YouTube and, uh, and uh, Odyssey and that dumb rumble and bit shoot and that other one, uh, I forget, and there's another one. <coughs> well, you look, oh, there's a whole lot of Christians out there. There sure are. There sure are. But then you start talking, well, do you rightly divide the word of truth? You know, there is no trinity. That's satanic. Okay? <laughs> and stuff like that. Then you, you, you see where these Christians really are, what they really are. Okay? I mean, haven't you been in this situation where you're just standing there? You haven't even said a word? And you get flacked by people? It's like, you know, even when you don't say anything, you're offensive to me. So, what? <laughs> what? Why is that, brethren? <laughs> the world cannot hate you because it hate because the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Why? Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil, and the Lord is that Spirit that dwells within you. So the Lord that is in you is a testimony unto the world that hates Him. And especially, brethren, if you are doing as the scriptures tell us to for us today in this dispensation, walking godly, okay? Oh, like I've said, you don't have to go out of your way for nothing. The Lord in you is a testimony onto the world itself and just the Lord in you is enough to get attacked. Now, yeah, let's be honest and fair. Yes, some of us mess uh, can, with our big mouths. <laughs> okay, mess things up. Yes, sometimes we, you know, often, more often than not, our flesh gets in the way and we get a little, you know, <laughs> prideful. Yes, but you see, the Lord in us himself. The Lord is that Spirit, the Holy Ghost, you know, sealed until the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, okay? The Lord himself in us chafes that. And you know who gets really chafed with us? Christians. Christians, too. Christians. Christians. How many, how many times have I ran into a Christian talking about rightly dividing the word of truth? It's like, and they look at you like you're like you're crazy. I've never heard of that. Well, yeah, no wonder, dear friend. You're in a pagan building, okay? You're in a pagan building that's given to you of Rome, okay? All scripture blends together, okay? It's all written to you. It's all written for you, not all written to you. you. Well, yeah, of course. Of course. You're you're a Christian in a church building. Of course you've never heard the truth of rightly dividing the word of truth. Of course not. Yea, hath God said. Well, divide doesn't mean divide in the Greek. And that's coming from who knows if that was even an actual uh, son of Ishmael. Who knows? But it's that mentality. <laughs> they that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of mine head. These Christians are the enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, are, is every single one who goes under the banner of Christian the enemy of Christ? No. No. But in this incident, the majority well out yells the minority in that equation. Prove me wrong. Please. Okay? They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of mine head. You being saved. You haven't done anything to them. But you being saved, that brings 
the world's hatred against you. They can't kill the Lord in you, but they can sure kill your body and attack you. They're not trying to kill you. They're trying to kill the Lord who they can't. So why do you think they're so vicious against you? They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs on mine head. They that would destroy me being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. Right here. Then I restored that which I took not away. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. The love of Christianity is a love that doesn't judge or tell the truth. The love of Christianity is like, don't scare them. Don't tell them unless they come to the Lord broken and contrite and in fear of him call upon his name, they're going to hell. No, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that God hates what you're doing. God hates that sin that you're doing. No, don't tell them that. Love them into the kingdom. That's hatred. That's not true love. That's not true love. And you don't have to be a jerk about it. You don't. You really don't. But in a loving fashion, it's like, look, I'm telling this to you because you run into a cliff and you're going to fall headlong and be splat. I'm trying to warn you. You don't have to be a jerk about it. But unfortunately, especially some of these, you know, veteran Christians always seem to turn into jerks. Hmm. But Romans chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 18. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Abhor is extreme hatred. We are to hate evil. And see, Christianity calls evil good and good evil. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. What is good? Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. Family. You know, our family, uh, the church of the living God. Okay? In honor, preferring one another. I would rather be spending time with my brothers and sisters than... Spend. I would rather spend two minutes in fellowship with a brother or sister than spend two hours with someone who's lost. That's what that's talking about, okay? Preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving ourselves. No, the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. The Lord is our hope. Patient in tribulation. <laughs> Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, right? Continuing instant in prayer. And hey, we all, I hello, need more of that. I knew a man who, um, excuse me. I know a man who um, didn't matter if something came up, didn't matter where he was. It's like, we ought to pray about that. And he'd, he'd pray right then and there. Get down, I'd take a knee. Did, didn't matter. People, like like uh, our, our brother Alexander Hartley, he burst out in the hymn in front of everybody. Didn't care. You know, same principle. You know, being instant in season in prayer. Uh, what is that? Uh, continuing instant in prayer. Be instant in season, out of season. Right? Well, pray about it. Why don't we pray about it? Okay, I'm going to. No, right now. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given the hospitality. Our needs. Our Lord will provide our needs. Given to hospitality. Do you have an open door for someone who is a brother or a sister? <laughs> My brother from Iowa were to come up unannounced. Door is open. Hmm? 
my brother, our, of course, our brother from Missouri comes up unannounced. Our door is open. From North Dakota, our door is open. Hey, take a plane from Croatia to here. Well, why you'd want to do that, I don't know. But the point is, from Croatia here, our door is open. Okay? From England, door is open. Our door is always open to the saints. And you know what? If someone needed something and the Lord would use it as a witness, we would open our door to a stranger because you don't know whether you're entertaining angels unawares. Yeah. I'm just saying. Are you given the hospitality? Hmm. I wonder how many of these superstar preachers here if a brother who is truly saved would come to them, it's like, hey, I need, can I, can I stay with you? I've just been to his, oh, well, no, brother, I don't have the room, or no, no. Would you be given the hospitality? Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Now, see, Christianity, you know, like to say, oh, thank you for persecuting us. Oh, you bless them by telling them the truth. Telling them the truth in love. That's how you bless them that persecute you. You tell them the truth. Okay? Bless and curse not. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. And personally, I've made, I've, I've done, you know, I try to do that, you know. We rejoice one way because we're we're one of another, you know. We are the body of Christ, the church of the living God, okay. We are the saints of the Lord. My brother's happy, praise the Lord, yay! My brother's sad, weeping, sorrowful. I weep with those who weep and I rejoice with those who rejoice. Why? Because that's my brother, that's my sister, Okay. Be of the same mind one toward another. And when that isn't there, that's where problems arise. Mind not high things, oh, such as yourself, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Again, how many of these superstar preachers nowadays? One's here on YouTube, too. How many of them would open their doors? Hmm? <laughs> yeah. How many of them would open their doors to somebody? If it were a need. Man of God, right? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Don't fight fire with fire because when you fight fire with fire, what wins? <laughs> Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Then I, in Psalm 69 verse 4, Then I restored that which I took not away. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Then I restored that which I took not away. As much as, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Now, to live peaceably, you do not compromise truth. No. See, and that's what Christianity tells you to do. To compromise truth in order to have unity. No. We are to have unity in truth. Well, what is truth? Yea, hath God said. Go, go away. Go take a long walk off of a short pier and go to hell already, okay? Yea, hath God said. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Uh, Romans chapter 4, uh, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. What is this talking about? Uh, Romans chapter 14, verses 12 and 13. 
So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Uh, excuse me. Uh, verses 11 and 12. Excuse me. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. See, you got to remember, David, with his sin with Bathsheba, should have been killed. Should have been killed. According to the law, he was more than worthy to die. So was Bathsheba. But the Lord put away his sin. And the enemy, what do they do? The enemy who may be aware of something that happened in your life in the past, what do they do? What do they do? The rabble rousers, like this guy, he did this a while ago. Well, I'm forgiven of that. I've repented of that. I've, you know, but I, I, no, see, he did this. So, David, who was a man, who sought after, went after God's own heart. He did not have the heart of God. That's blasphemy. Okay, no, he did not. No, he did not. He sought, he ran, he chased after God's own heart. Okay, he did. But he messed up. And we know what David's sin was with Bathsheba and what it cost him. So, let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake, because I've messed up. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. Because why? We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God. All right, verse 7. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. <laughs> and of course, verse uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, shame hath covered my face. Shame. Who's, who's doing the shaming? The world, because they don't want to hear, you, hear the truth come from you. They want to have their ears itched and tickled. They want to hear smooth things. Prophes uh, they want to have deceits prophesied to them. They want to have someone who talks very sweetly, who never raises their voice, who knows how to manipulate with tonation of their voice, to talk to them smooth things, prophesy deceits. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 and 10. 8 on to verse 10. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, the elect, the elected way of the cross, not the Calvinism, elect and non-elect, not this uh, black Hebrew Israelite or Brizraelite nonsense. The elect, the elected way of the cross, that way is east, okay? The elected way, you go the way of the cross, death to self, godly sorrow, contrition, and fear of the Lord. You call upon his name and he save you. That's the way of the cross, the way of death. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. Shame because of standing for God? No. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, of course. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Dearly beloved sister, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And they shame you to try to shame you. My Jesus wouldn't do that. You're right, your Jesus wouldn't do that. Because your Jesus isn't the Jesus of the authorized version of the scriptures. Your, your Jesus is that man of sin, the son of perdition. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Your Jesus wouldn't do that. The Jesus Christ of the Scriptures who is come in the flesh. Yeah. So, shame hath covered my face. 
And also, uh, remember about Moses when he went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh at first is like, you're idle. What, what are you doing? And then he afflicted the people, and they, and they go to Moses like, was it because there wasn't, weren't enough graves that you brought this upon us? The Lord look upon you. And then Moses goes to the Lord. He's like, Lord, ever since I spoke up, it, it became worse. Then what did the Lord say to Moses? Hey, you sit down. You sit back, boy. You watch. You see what I'm going to do. Right? Verse 8. I am become a stranger unto my brethren. You know, um, family by, you know, blood, blood relations. And an alien unto my mother's children. First Peter. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. Thank you, Lord. Verses 1 on to verse 5. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Oh, and yesterday I was reminded of this with, some, with the issues that my wife is going through. You know, I... Um, I, I've got a pride problem. I do. I do. I've, I've got a pride problem. And my pride, I, 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 I struggle with it daily. And praise the Lord through little things. And brethren and, and, and sisters. And uh, just who, who give verses of scripture. And it's like, you know, oh, that hurt. But praise the Lord, you know. But yes. The lusts of men and the flesh to the lusts of men. It's not about us. It's about the Lord. And we are to prefer one another and we are to prefer others above ourselves. I needed to be reminded of that yesterday. Even this morning too. Even this morning. See, charity is self-sacrifice. And we are to have charity, one for another. Self-sacrifice. Absolutely, we are. And we are not to live the rest of his time in the lust of the flesh, in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, Excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. Here we go again. <laughs> Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of right, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick, alive, and the dead. For every one of us is going to give an account of himself to God. Again, see the Lord in you. And when you go to live your life according to the scripture, you don't have to do anything but what the Lord says to incur the wrath of the lost and these wicked Christians. They, how, can you not, how, how, how can you not be bothered by the stuff that's going on? Huh? How, how, what, you, you, it's not, you're not okay with watching Hollywood movies or doing things in the world? We've got to be like the world and win the world, right? <laughs> And they think it's strange. Your family. Oh, here we go again. Every single one of us who is genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we all have issues with our relation family. Every single one of us. We do. It's just, it's just the name of the game. Yes. Oh, I can't see that. I have become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. In my family, my wife's family, and your family. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yeah. Verse 9. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. And of course, this is a, a reference. I just go there, uh, John chapter 2. 
um, about our Lord. Where's your heart? Where your heart is, there your treasure is. Okay? Is your heart set on things of the Lord? Is your treasure in heaven or is your treasure on earth? Hmm? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Okay? Is your treasure on earth or a treasure in heaven? Okay? Are you zealous for the true things of God? Hmm? See, our enemies, they're very zealous. They're zealous for Satan. They're zealous for this because this is what they're all about. They're not about the things that are of heaven the things that are of earth because this that wisdom is earthly sensual devilish okay that's what the enemies are about it's right here it's right here that's what they're about but see john chapter 2 uh god make this reference here verses 13 on to verse 17 come on the jews passover was at hand and jesus went up into jerusalem uh, went up to jerusalem excuse me and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small cords, he made himself a little whip. Probably a cat of nine tails. That's what it sounds like. <clears throat> he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the table. <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> Talk about some house cleaning. Yes, for the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up fulfilled prophecy there okay and said unto them that sold doves take these things hence make not my father's house a house of merchandise and his disciples remember that it was written the zeal of thine house hath hath eaten me up and let me see and there's the reference right there in the margin of the, my cambridge right there we had to we had to reference that okay all right Verse 10, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. You're fasting? That, what? Fast? I've never been called to fast, okay? I've never been called to, oh, you, you want to get money from the Lord? Go ahead and fast. You know, you're fasting for the wrong reasons. Prayer and fasting, Okay? <laughs> When we, as the church of the living God, when we fast, okay, number one, when we fast, we don't, hey, I'm fasting for the Lord. You've blown it. You've blown it. Like the Lord says, when you fast, anoint your head with oil, that you don't appear on the men that you be fasting. But what do the hypocrites do? I'm fasting because I want my breakthrough. People teach that. These charismatics. You want your financial breakthrough? Go ahead and fast for a couple days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what God are you fasting on to? Yeah. Yes. But see, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. That was to my reproach. True scriptural fasting is looked upon as scorned and scorned upon by the Christians. Oh, there are books on fasting, but what? They fast. The fast is for a benefit that would accrue to them, usually financially, to unlock, to win a blessing. That's fasting for the wrong reasons. When we fast, okay, it is for relational purposes, okay? I fasted because of mourning before. I fasted because I want, Lord, show me. I, 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 I don't get this. You know, that kind of thing. Or, Lord, weep with one another. Weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who re rejoice. You know? Like when, uh, like our brother from New Jersey who was going through some tough times, you know, you fast for a brother and, and you stay, stay in prayer for someone else. See, fasting is, is not for you or for your benefit always. Okay? No. True fasting has the Lord as its principle. Okay? But see, Christianity takes this uh, takes this root. Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. You know, you fast for the wrong reason, it becomes a reproach to you. 
you fast unto this world and some certain things like that and talk about true scriptural fasting for today, the Christians, I've never been called to fast. God wants to bless you. God wants us to be rejoicing to eat of the abundance of his table. Isaiah chapter 22, verses 12 on to verse 14. And in that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. You know, the, the um, Thanksgiving that's coming up, uh, when you look historically in America, Thanksgiving was originally intended to be a day of fasting, weeping, and prayer and seeking the Lord. But look at what has happened to Thanksgiving. Gluttony, alcoholism, and sports entertainment. In that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and to mourning and to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. This is your time now, your best life now. It's your time right now. It's all about you. And it was, was re here's the scary part of this. And it was revealed in mine ears by the Lord of hosts. Surely this iniquity shall not be purged from you till you die, said the Lord of God of hosts. Some of you of the Church of the Living God smoke cigarettes. And I fear that when it comes to something like that, that's one of those things that this iniquity will not be purged from you unless you die. That's sad. But unfortunately, unfortunately, with some of us, we have these things that just nag us like a bad habit. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But see, fasting that we looked at. In that day did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping and mourning and to mourning, to baldness and to girding with sackcloth. Okay? Mourning. Okay? Well, it doesn't say anything about mourning. Uh, when you are truly mourning, you don't go and become a glutton. Okay? There's fasting for the wrong reasons, and there's fasting for the right reasons. Okay? And also, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just one verse, one verse. It's not 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse, where are we? 32? Uh, if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus... What advantage is it me? If the dead rise not, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. See, we mourn and weep. We fast and pray to the Lord that those who were not saved yesterday might be saved today for what we see. But hey, we're Christians, it's all about us. Let's get, a, it's my time to find favor. It's my time to be blessed. Oh, uh, I can feel the presence of the Lord and I'm going to get my blessing right now. Grotesque. I, I think that's actually a hymn. That's a gro one. That's a bad one. It's my time to find favor. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, uh, beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Let's continue. All right. I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them, to them, the Christians. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was the, strong, the song of the drunkards. Oh yeah, this guy, this, is a, this guy of the Church of the Living God, okay? <laughs> Look at this, look at this guy walking around all sorrowful, uh, upset about what's going on. You know, hey, don't worry, Trump's going to come back. 
she, yeah, yeah. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. How he's he's way too serious. You know those those Christian guys. Hey, at least at least they, we could talk about the sports and about the movie we all see. This this guy, the Church of Living God. I'm talking to him about the, this, this movie that came out. He looks at me like I just flatulated in his presence. He doesn't know. Song of the Drunkards. Those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Okay? But as for me, while well, they are eating and drinking for tomorrow we die. This is my time to find favor. But as for me, my prayers unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Psalm, and right here, right here, right here, Psalm 102. Now look at that while I get to Psalm 102. Look at that context there in Psalm 69. Look at it. Look at that. Okay? Look at that. Okay, let's look at and let, there we go. Look at what we've already read. Save me, O God, for my waters are coming to my soul. For the waters are coming to my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am coming to the deep, I am coming to deep waters where the floods overflow me. Okay? Oppressed by the enemy. We seeking to, to live godly as ambassadors for Christ. And we're hampered and being persecuted by the lost world. And also our greatest enemy, Christianity. You're being too extreme. I've never heard. My Jesus wouldn't do that. You are, where are you sending them? You need to send them to a church building so they can get trained, uh, taught, and uh, educated by a Jesuit trained cemetarian. Yeah. Yeah. But look at that. Look, look at that again. From verses 11 on to verse 13. I made also my, I made sackcloth also my garment. And I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gates speak against me. I was the song of the drunkards. But as for me, here's the turning point. Here's the turning point. Every song has a turning point, at least one. Some has two. Okay, but right here, here's the turning point for the psalm. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Right here, man. Ooh. Psalm 102. Psalm 102, 12 on the 17. But thou, O Lord. But thou, O Lord. Thou, O Lord, but Thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and Thy remembrance unto all generations. Amen. Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion, for the time to favor her, yea, the set time has come. Alleluia. For Thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. The dust, stones, the polished stones, and the dust thereof. People were made of dust. Okay? Now, this is a, a psalm that has everything to do with the time of Jacob's trouble when the Jews uh, are, wake up. Okay? So to speak. Okay, this psalm is specifically, I believe, talking more so for the time of Jacob's trouble. But remember, we were grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous and I've beg your pardon I have a lot of experience witnessing and speaking unto the Hebraic true Hebraic Jewish people that's why I get really offended when you get these idiot devils who saying that they are the true Jews Hebrews and they're not okay I, I've spent quite a bit of time witnessing and talking onto the actual Hebraic Jewish people Okay? That's why I get so irate with these people who say they are Jews and they are not. Okay? But see, this is talking about more so for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But see, the point is, but thou, Lord, thou shalt arise. Verse 14, 
for, uh, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory at his second coming. Amen. Amen. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Right there, reference of his second coming. Did he build up Zion at his first coming? No, he came here to die. This is talking about his second coming. Okay? He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Amen. Amen. And, and 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Just two verses, one and two. But check this out. Check this out. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You have today... God has given you today. What are you doing with today? You're not saved? Why? Love this world a little too much, huh? Your time now? Your time to find favor? Does that offend you? Good. Come. Look in the description box. Come. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? But now, let's continue. From 13 on to verse 20. Deliver me out of the mire, and let me not sink. But thou, O oh Lord, thou shalt arise. Okay? Look at, look at the attention and focus that is being given unto the Lord as our Redeemer, our Deliverer. Okay? The focus before the turning point was on what? What the waters, what he was going through for walking, living godly in this present world. Okay? Our instruction and in righteousness, obviously. Okay, look at that. And then the turning point. He turns away from all that. But thou, oh Lord. And see, Christianity says, Thou, O oh Lord, for my pocketbook. Thou, O oh Lord, for my benefit. Not thou, O oh Lord, I want you and you alone. Christianity, the Christian. You, Lord, for my benefit. Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me out of the deep waters. Here again, we see the reference of waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let me let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Well, what's that verse? Uh, uh, her mouth is as a deep pit or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, and hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of mine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach, and my shame, and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart. I am full of heaviness, and I looked for some to take pity, but there was none. And for comfort, comforters, but I found none. Now, let's continue in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, onto, from verse 3 on to verse 10 now. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much... <laughs> Patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers, yet true, as unknown and yet well known. See, the enemy, 
it's not about you personally. They're trying to kill the Lord that lives within you, see. Okay? <clears throat> as dying, and behold, we live. As chastened and not killed. For if just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked fall into mischief. Okay? As sorrowful, yet always, re always rejoicing. But thou, O Lord, our blessed hope. <laughs> What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. As poor, yet making many rich. Not financially, rich in spirit. Rich in the Lord. Okay? As having nothing yet possessing all things. Yes, because the Lord lives within us and He has created all things. We, we don't possess the Lord. He possesses us, but He lives within us. Hence, we have the creator of all things. God lives within you. You know that. We know that. How often do you ponder on that very fact that the perfect Creator, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, lives within us. How many of you muse on that? Hmm? Hmm? As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing and yet possessing all things. All things. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 on to verse 30. Paul talking about what he went through because the Lord was in him. See, they couldn't beat it out of him. They could beat him. They couldn't beat Christ out of him because he, he, is sealed, he was sealed unto the day of redemption. Like they... They can bring us through the mud. They can slander us, try to throw dung on our names and attack us. They're going after the Lord. They're going after the Lord who they hate. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 and 30. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeyings often... In perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Yeah. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is offended, and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Look right across the page in chapter 12, verses 9 on to verse 10. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. Amen. Verse 21 in Psalm 69. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And of course, fulfilled prophecy right there. We got it. We got to touch on it. Go to Matthew chapter 27. We have to address it because this is another thing of fulfillment of prophecy that our Lord did. Uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 34. Just one verse. On the cross. Uh, you know what? Let's, let's read verses 34 on to verse 38. 
They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. In those grouping of verses right there alone, how many prophecies were fulfilled? Okay? Being uh, numbered with the transgressors, uh, parted my garments and cast lots for my vesture, uh, vinegar and gall to drink. Okay? We had to touch on that. Had to touch on that. Now let's read. Now let's read on to verse 25 from verse 21. Let their table become a snare before them. Okay? Yeah. Those who have great riches. Those who have uh, great things of the world. Let it, it's a snare unto you people. You know? It's a snare. You know, when our Lord says, not many noble, not many mighty, not many wise after the flesh. Why? Because they can fall into self-sufficiency. That's why not many. That's why these people who have all this stuff have it worse than we who are poor and dependent on Christ. They have it harder than we do, brethren. You know someone who is rich this way, who is of the church of the living God? You pray for that brother or sister because their, their, their means to be tempted is far more greater than we. If they're mighty, they're noble, wise. Let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. You know about the quails in the wilderness that uh, the Lord sent because they pestered him. And he's like, okay, you want quails? I'm going to give you so many quails that's going to come out your nose and out your ears. And you're going to be made sick of it. Careful what you wish for. Let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their loins continually to shake. Pour upon them, pour out thine indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. First Timothy chapter 6. Okay. The, the temptation, the lust, Worldly things. We've talked about this at length before, but I'm sharing with you what the Lord shared with me today. First Timothy chapter 6, 9, and 10. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And remember, rich isn't always this. Popularity, fan base, buildings, cars, swimming pools, houses, properties, whatever. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, for which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And of course, why is that? Why is that? Well, go to Luke chapter four. Luke chapter four. Hmm. See, we seek to walk godly in this world, that puts a target on our forehead and on our back. Okay? It really does. And Satan, if he's, you know, allowed of the Lord, he's there, right there, to, to try to trip us up with any kind of temptation. Any kind of temptation. Luke chapter 4, of course, verses 5 on to verse 7. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, also be thine. And see, we, we automatically think of this when it comes to that. But think about this. Satan can come along and it's like, hey, why don't you go ahead and stick up for the Catholics for a day? 
and get people to rally around you so they support you more and you itch their ears and tickle their ears about things. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and do that. Egocentric sap. Go ahead. Go ahead and speak smooth things for a little while. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, hey, you do it that way? I, I, yeah, I mean, you might not be doing exactly like scripture, but go ahead and compromise a little bit. Then watch the blessings come. Hmm? And what and what is that and what is that a result of? What is that a result of? Colossians. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. I could almost do this uh, verbatim by memory, but beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy, the wisdom of men, and vain deceit. Yea, hath God said. Yea, hath God said. Yeah. After the rudiments of the world, wait, after the traditions of Catholics, oh, excuse me, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, Not after Christ. Let's continue on to verse 28 now in Psalm 69. For, uh, beginning at verse 26, because we read verse 25. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Hmm. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. And why is that? Why is that? Oh, I think you know where we're headed here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And of course, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 32, Romans chapter 1, verse 32. See, if Satan can distract someone of the Church of the Living God for getting messed up in carnality. Romans 1.32 Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them misery loves company. Yeah. Yeah. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. They pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Now, someone of the church of the living God who is actually saved, born again, converted, and has the Lord within them, and they give, they give, are given over onto carnality. Oh, they become very successful, don't they? But there's a leanness there. There's a leanness there. Why? Because self-sufficiency. Because they know the tricks. They know how to do it. They know where the verses are. They know how to use. They know how to use this as a weapon for their own advantage. I remember uh, a sermon that Mr. Ruckman had said that if he wanted to deceive people, he would be a really good uh, good deceiver. Why? Because he knew where the uh, where they were. He knew where the verses were. I don't remember what sermon that was in. You, you want to waste your time to go and fact check that? Go ahead. Go ahead. But yes, Mr. Ruckman said that. That um, if he wanted to be a false prophet or a deceiver, he'd be a good one. Why? Because he knew where the verses were at. A lot of these people, I mean, a lot of these devils, these coadjutors, a lot of the good ones, good ones meaning that they're very crafty, that you can't pin them down, 
and that they also are very well versed in scripture. See, in order to deceive on the level that some of these Christians are deceiving, you have to know, have some kind of a knowledge of the scriptures. Because those who don't know, they just blah, 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 and they get led along by some idiot, okay? By a provincial, okay? They get morsels from their table, kind of stuff. Okay? All right. Now, let's continue on to verse 31 in Psalm 69. But I am poor and sorrowful. See how he was talking about, you know, in this, uh, where it's like... Um, Verse 13, the turning point, but as for me, thou, O Lord. And then he talks about those who are self-sufficient, again, okay? Those of the world, all right? And look at this. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. Amen. I will praise the name of God with a song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, okay? And will magnify him with thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hooves. Psalm 51 closest thing that you're going to get to a sinner's prayer in scripture. Those of you who may be aware of that prayer of Manasseh, that's pretty good, but that's not scripture. That's not scripture. Okay? Scripture, Psalm 51, the closest you're going to get to a sinner's prayer. But Psalm 51 verses 14 under the close of the chapter. And this is when he was pleading about Bathsheba. And remember, uh, in verse 6, verse 6 in Psalm 69, Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. And Psalm 69 is a Psalm of David. And wouldn't you know it, Psalm 51 is a Psalm of David of his um, repenting after what he did with Bathsheba. The reference, you know, the tie-ins between verse 6 and verse 31 here. But, verse, uh, Psalm 51, 14, on to the close of the chapter. On to the close of the psalm. S Psalms don't have chapters. Thank you, brother. You were thinking it. I could, Thank you, Lord. Uh, psalm 51, verse 14, on to the close of the psalm. Thank you, brother. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall shew forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Broken. Contrite. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how, why are you calling on the name of the Lord? Just uttering, Jesus Christ will come in the flesh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just uttering words? No. No. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Now let's finish this up. 
This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor, and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that move therein. Psalm 50. You know, the very first psalm, the very first psalm, the very first psalm, Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. The beginning of our walk. And the, 70, uh, the 75th psalm, the middle psalm. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Unto thee do we give thanks, for that thy name is near, thy wondrous works declare. That thy wondrous works declare. Halfway there. We're almost there. And then at the end, when we're going out. Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and ornament and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Praise ye, Lord. Oh, we're going through the waters, brethren. And for a lot of us, the waters are coming to our soul, right? Being overwhelmed. Be not overwhelmed. But thou, Lord. Thou, Lord. God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Our God, our Father. Our God, our Father. He is our answer. He is the answer to everything. We possess all things because we have the Lord within us. They hate us because the Lord that lives within us. Be not weary. Do not faint. That's going to be it for this video. Like I said, I just wanted to share this what the Lord shared with me and I wanted to share it with you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. and Thank you for your prayers and please continue to pray for us. My wife, we, we really need your prayers. And You know, if you have prayer requests, let me know. You know that community thing? Put prayer requests there for you. If you got a prayer request, let it be known. Put it there. Okay? Pray for one another. Be there for one another. Love one another, dear brethren. May the, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, bless you with the grace and peace. I'm going to get this uploaded. Like I said, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, we love you. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video.